Hey guys, it's Melanie. Happy Sunday. Welcome back. I hope you're having a fantastic weekend. Um, so this video is going to be going up the Sunday of Memorial Weekend, which is usually the kind of unofficial start to summer. And also for those of us who are in the wedding industry, it kicks off the summer wedding season. If you are not familiar, I actually used to be a wedding planner. Um, most recently, um, I was a wedding florist. So I have a number, well over a decade of experience in the wedding industry. Um, I, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of my history here in this video, um, but um, yeah, I have a lot of experience in the wedding industry and I have seen a lot of funny and cringy things at weddings. And for a very long time now, I have been interested in sharing some of these stories with you guys. Just some like quick stories here and there that I can sprinkle in as just something different on my channel, something funny, something that might make you, you know, go, Ugh. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I have so many stories, you guys. Um, because I've been doing this for so long, I have just seen so much. And one of my favorite things to watch here on YouTube are like wedding horror stories or, um, you know, like cringy wedding stories or funny wedding stories. And having so many of these myself, I would just love to be able to share them with you guys. So I don't necessarily expect all of you to have an interest in this, but again, just something different. And I really like using this channel for just a creative outlet for myself. And I have thought about honestly writing a lot of these down and maybe like writing a book or something, but reality is I'm probably never gonna get around to that. So this is sort of my way of documenting those stories and um, yeah, just hopefully giving you guys a laugh. Um, so I have so many years of experience in the wedding industry. I actually started a wedding planning company with um, one of my friends back in 2009. This was about a year after I got married. Um, she was actually just laid off from her corporate job where she was an event planner for an insur a large insurance company. Um, and I was actually at the time, um, I had gotten out of social work and I was working at a college. I was coordinating student testing. Um, and coordinating some of the events around campus. So we both had quite a bit of like event planning experience. Plus, like I said, I had just gotten done planning my wedding the year before. And um, so since she was not doing anything else, um, she actually approached me about starting a wedding planning company. And so we did, we started this company and actually the story today is going to be of our very first event and oh man, it was a doozy, <laughs> so we'll get to that. But um, anyway, so I did wedding planning from 2009 to 2015, and during that time span, we actually also added um, a floral company underneath the wedding planning company because I, me, had an interest in also floral design. A lot of times we would show up to weddings in the early days and florists would deliver flowers that just looked absolutely awful. We, we knew this was not what the bride ordered. So oftentimes it was my job when we were setting up, once the florists left, to basically like try to like figure out a way to rearrange a lot of these, you know, decor items and make them look like what the bride had actually asked for. Um, you know, we really prided ourselves on kind of doing a lot of this stuff behind the scenes so that when we walked our clients in to, you know, view everything before everything got started, that they wouldn't have this moment of like, oh my God, what are these flowers? This is not what I asked for, you know? So I was basically just doing my best to salvage <laughs> what was, what was delivered and try to make it look as pretty as possible. So that was kind of how I got into doing florals in the first place. And then um, I actually just, uh, several clients that we had had a lower budget and they asked us if we could create simple floral arrangements for them. 
and um, that's how I got into it. That was literally how it started for me. So from there, I started taking some floral design classes, um, you know, just kind of digging deeper into that. So between 2009 and 2015, I was doing both planning, almost full-time wedding planning. Um, I, I did leave my full-time job at the college right after I gave birth to Stella. Um, that was always the intention to leave that job. I wasn't passionate about it. And we were doing pretty well with the, um, with the planning company and the florals at that point anyway. So financially it was fine. Um, but anyway, so, um, oh gosh, I just totally lost my train. <laughs> This is going to happen a lot because I, my brain cells, uh, I'm going through perimenopause. It's, it's a thing. Um, anyway, I think moral of the story here was, um, right at around 2015, um, it got to be too much for me to do both because I had planning clients and I had floral clients and I was working probably between like 50 and 60 hours a week. It just was a lot. And when we had really large floral orders and I also had, you know, coordinating duties, like sometimes it would be upwards of like 60 to 70, like just an enormous amount of time that I was awake just doing wedding stuff. And it got to be really overwhelming. So in 2015, I actually made the decision to walk away from the planning company and my business partner at the time and I got together and I was like, look, I know that you're really passionate about planning. At this point, I'm honestly more passionate about floral work than I am about wedding planning. So what do you think about splitting the company in half? Um, you can take the planning company and do what you want with it because she wanted to continue to expand that. Whereas that made me a little bit more nervous. Um, so I thought it made sense for me to just, you know, take the floral arm of the company, go off and do my own thing and allow her to take the planning part of the company, go off and do her thing. And there was no bad blood. <clears throat> I'm honestly really proud of how large she has grown this company. Um, she has many employees at this point and um, it's quite successful and she has expanded to other cities as well. So it's going really well for her and I've always been happy for her regarding that. Um, and honestly, I just at this point in my life would never dream of going back to wedding planning. <laughs> Um, I, I would love if, if you guys have questions about how we got started, um, like the pros, the cons, um, some things to think about. Let me know if you have an interest in that. So leave your topic ideas down below if you if you have any. Um, but yeah, I just decided to go ahead in 2015 and just start doing florals full time. So I walked away with the floral arm of the company and just ran with it up until um, really mostly probably 2021, which is when I decided, mm, I think I need to take a break from this. The wedding industry is not easy to be in you guys. And if you have a romanticized idea about it, um, definitely dig deeper into like all of the ins and outs of it because it is, it's not always easy. In fact, I don't think it's ever easy. Um, it's not always fun. It is definitely not glamorous. I know that there are certain movies or TV shows that have maybe made it seem that way. Um, you deal with a lot. You deal with um, clients that are highly emotional. You deal with family, uh, lots of family drama. In fact, my social work degree worked perfectly for being a wedding planner, but absolutely never again. Um, there, there are guests. Oh, a lot of these stories are going to be about wedding guests, not even so much the brides themselves. I've had a couple of bridezillas, but it's mostly the guests. Um, drunk people, um, vendors. Vendors are fun to work with. <laughs> Just so many stories, you guys. And I really would love to be able to document them here on my channel, just as like a fun thing to look back on periodically. And um, yeah. So anyway, if you guys do have more questions about like my floral business or the wedding planning business or, you know, what it took to get into that, like investments, um, how basically just how it works, let me know. I'm happy to share that information with you guys. Um, and let's get into the very first story. Okay, kids, 
kids at weddings. Um, I feel like there are two camps. There are people that believe that children should be allowed to attend weddings no matter what. And there are also people who think there's a little bit of nuance in terms of whether kids should be able to attend certain weddings or not. And then there are also the people that are like, children do not belong at weddings at all. <laughs> I fall into the there's the nuance category. Um, I have a child myself. I am not anti-child, but I also know my daughter very well. And if we receive an invitation to <clears throat> a wedding or an event that I think she would be able to manage without like misbehaving, <laughs> or ruining the um, the event for the people that are putting it on, then I will absolutely bring her if, if children are encouraged to come. Um, some invitations say, uh, please leave your kids at home. I, I think you should respect that. Um, but yeah, if, if I think she can handle it, I will bring her. But in the vast majority of cases, especially when she was younger, we hired a babysitter. And um, this particular wedding, was kind of wild so it was our very first wedding that we planned and the bride and groom they were pretty laid back um it wasn't a super formal event um parents were allowed to bring their children and so uh but it was a wedding like it was very much like you know um there there was a formal ceremony there was a cocktail hour there was a reception the story I'm sharing with you guys today happened during the reception. So um, I set everything up. This was uh, a wedding that I actually handled on my own with a couple of assistants that came with me. And um, we set everything up. Um, the biggest focus of most weddings tends to be the cake in terms of like decor. A lot of people, you know, like to go take pictures of the cake before it's cut. This particular couple certainly spent a fair amount of money on their wedding cake. You can get an $80 wedding cake, you know, just like a one tier, like just little cutting cake, if you will, or you can get a multi-tiered fancy wedding cake. This was kind of like in between the two, but I know they spent at, I think it was at least 800 to $900 on this cake. Um, expensive, right? So we set up everything, it looks really pretty, um, and the reception gets started. There were a lot of rambunctious children at this event and parents who just were there to have a good time by themselves and they let their children just run free. <laughs> Very free range type parenting. Um, and I just saw that like this wasn't gonna go well. And so, you know, I talked to the bride. I was like, you know, hey, there's a lot of kids running around. Do you want me to say something to the parents? And she was like, oh, I think it'll be okay. Um, you know, if they start to get out of hand, you know, definitely, like if you need to, definitely say something to the parents. They're probably gonna be pretty receptive, yada, yada. You know, I was always very good about communicating with my brides because I never wanted to like overset my bounds. Even at my very first event, I knew that, you know, like it would probably be worth checking in the, with the bride before like going off and saying something to people that I don't even know. So, um, and this bride and I had spent quite a bit of time together. So I felt like I knew her really well. Um, so the reception kind of really gets going and these kids are running around the wedding cake. And I started to get very nervous about that because we were still a ways away from actually cutting the cake. And um, yeah, you know where this is going. <laughs> So they just, they keep running around the cake. They're playing tag. They are pushing the table. Um, now this was a table that was, it, it was through a venue. And so it was one of those tables, that, like a, I think it was like a 48 inch round that you had to like wheel out, set the legs up, right? But um, if you were to push this thing hard enough, it could collapse. And so, you know, I went over to the kids a couple times and I was like, hey, totally good that you guys are running around. Would you mind maybe going to the dance floor? You know, just kind of trying to like redirect the kids very gently. At the time I didn't have a kid, and but I had worked with children. And so 
I was using my kid skills <laughs> back when I was, um, you know, a social worker. I, I worked primarily with children. So, you know, like I, I knew how to approach kids. So, but these kids just did not give a flying rat's patoot about um, my requests. And they just kept running and pushing that table and the parents, they were there. This was not a huge reception space. They could see what their children were. They could hear. Everyone could hear the children. Um, so one of the kids um, ran up to the table and uh, another kid, they were playing tag, I guess. Another kid ran behind the table and the kid ran up and basically pushed the table. And even though we had secured the legs, like I made very sure that, you know, the legs were like not going to fold in on each other. There was like a, um, there was like a security piece that you had to like click in place at the bottom. I knew that was, those were clicked in place. Like I had done that myself before I flipped the table over. And then I also got underneath after setting the table up to make sure that those were still clipped in place. They were, so the table was secure. But the kid pushed it so hard that it like it knocked the table over you guys and this cake this $800 cake smashed to the floor the couple had not even cut the cake it just smashed to the floor and had I done that as a child I think I would have immediately been like oh oh, I'm in trouble. These kids, not at all. They basically just went about like continuing to play their tag game. And like the crash was really loud. And so the music, it was like, it was like slow motion, you guys. It just like, scre everything screeched to a halt and everyone looked and was like horrified. Cake all over the floor all over the wall like they push that table so this little boy pushed this table so hard that it just went the cake went flying off the table and i was horrified the bride and the groom were just standing there like with their eyes like just huge oh, so the parents did eventually get up and um, they brought their kids to the table and had them sit down. And then um, my assistants and I, um, we were able to salvage the top tier, like the, the top tier kind of stayed off of like the, the dirty floor. And so um, I had like a little butter knife in my, in my kit that I had, like my little emergency kit. And I kind of like salvaged the frosting a little bit and we put that back onto the table and they were able to cut the top tier. Um, but the rest of the cake was, <clears throat> I mean, it was on the ground. So um, essentially like we, we couldn't serve it. The, uh, the catering company refused to, um, to serve that cake and I don't blame them. Like there's absolutely no way. Um, so the bride and groom were able to cut the top tier and they were able to feed each other that. <laughs> But there was no cake. There was no cake at the wedding. And um, yeah, not sure where those kids are now, but that was in 2009. And um, hopefully they grew up to be lovely young adults who <laughs> are no longer terrorizing wedding cakes, but I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that's my first story for you guys. I have plenty more where, where that came from. Um, the next uh, stories that I upload, they'll be a little bit shorter. I'll be a little bit more concise, but I wanted to give you guys a little bit of my history in the industry, and um, I thought it would be appropriate to start with my very first <laughs> terrible moment at a wedding. So anyway, you guys, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your Memorial weekend, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Toodaloo.